there welcome back to my channel it is of course Chelsea of she designs things and in today's video I'm going to be sharing with you how to create a contact form using Google Sheets and Apps Script so if you'd like to know more about how to do this then stay tuned okay so you all voted and this is what you elected so keep in mind if you would like to vote for the next video just make sure you go to the community tab located inside of youtube to vote or submit a request for the next video so this video will be about how to create this contact form inside of app script it's utilizing app script to generate this basically um, web app, which is what we're going to be using to create this and using some CSS and I decided to use material design for the uh, style. So for the CSS to create this and just a little bit of HTML and of course we need some script to make it function. So what the script does is once someone fills in this form and they hit submit, it will email you that someone has submitted. So here an example of how the script works. Put in some test information, gonna click submit, and then it's going to say, thank you for contacting us. We will be in touch. And then the email will then go into our folder where you see right here, contact form submission. And if we click on the contact form submission, it'll give the person's name, Jenna Holmes, and of course my testing. And this is pretty awesome. Thanks so much. Okay, so that's really cool. <laughs> We've already got it created uh, for the most part, but now I'm just going to share how I got this done so that you're able to achieve it yourself. All right, so I didn't want this video to be really long, so I decided to kind of make it a voiceover and show you some of the, you know, edits and kind of how it was created. So you first need to open up app not app scripts, but Google Sheets. Um, so, you know, just go to Google Sheets or uh, sheets.google.com, I believe. And then you will have to create your sheets in here in order for you to open up app script. And then here I'm just showing you that you don't have to use material CSS. You can use any sort of CSS that you would like to use, any framework such as Pure, Spectre, Bootstrap, um, Bulma, all of these other frameworks that you're able to use to create your contact form. But for this, we're going to use the materialized one. All right, so now I just opened up a new sheet and in the sheet, you're going to start adding your headers. But first, I'm going to name the sheet first. I'm going to name it the contact form and then I'm going to add in those headers. So I like to start off with adding the timestamp first. And that's because when you start putting in data, you'll realize that the one thing you want that'll probably never change is the timestamp. So you want to start all of your headers off, at least the first header be the timestamp. And then I'm adding the name, email and message. And then here you can add other fields if you want, such as a phone number. Maybe you want to pose a question. You can ask a question here. Um, it's your choice on how you want your contact form to look. This contact form will be just a very simple contact form. Um, and if you're at this point where you create this contact form with me and you want to add other fields and you don't know how to do it, I'm going to full stop you and tell you that you are probably getting ahead of yourself in terms of understanding javascript and html and then take a step back because it's actually super easy to add those other fields and if you don't know how to add them you're probably not at that level yet all right so here i show where you open app script to open app script you actually have to go to the extensions and then you'll see apps script and so this is a script editor uh google uses a, a java script it's a JavaScript editor and your first file is always the code.js file. And what I'm doing right now is just naming the, the project name. So I named it contact form just to make it easier. All right. So now that I've named the form, I'm just also kind of showing a little bit of uh, what you'll see when you're working inside of the form. You'll have the code.js and then you can add a file um, on the left hand side by selecting that plus sign. But we need to start with a function and we are going to start with a do something. So we need to start with a do get. We're basically telling the, 
the program, hey, I need you to go and retrieve some information. We're, we're writing the program in a way that the script editor knows it has to do something. So we're saying do get, and now I'm declaring a variable. So I'm saying a var, and that's how you declare a variable. So do get this variable, which is the template from this file. And so that is how it's written. I'm writing it in a way so that it makes sense. <laughs> um, it, a, a lot of times, <clears throat> excuse me, a lot of times when people are explaining this part, they don't make it make sense. They just kind of say exactly what's on the screen. So I want it to make sense. Like it's telling a story. The story is do go get, do go get. <laughs> I need you to retrieve. Um, this variable so this information from this service provider so I'm using this HTML service which is inside of Google um, so use this service which is the HTML service and retrieve the information from this template and the template that's in quote I called it contact that's actually the HTML form that we're going to be creating and then right now I'm actually in adding in the the data that's going to be changing when you have the I call them the squiggly brackets. <laughs> when you use the squiggly brackets that are sort of open, you're you're saying to it, "Hey, the squiggly brackets. I need you to um, the the data you're going to retrieve is going to be empty variable. <laughs> That's the whole reason." So here I'm just showing you where you can go and find more resources. Um, if you ever get stuck and you need to find something particular to work inside of Google's apps script, um, they do have a documentation page that you can go and retrieve that information from. Now here I'm actually writing the second function and that function is to say on the form submittal. So once you get the data um, from this form, I need you to append that data to the row inside of the spreadsheet. So in order for this to make sense when you're writing, you have to tell it to do something after it's retrieved the information and, and gotten the information from the template. Once the information is submitted, you know, when you press submit or select the submit button to add, you know, to submit information, you need it to do something else, which for us is going to be on the spreadsheet append that data so the new date so that's the date and timestamp and then we also have the name and the email and obviously the message that we you know want to um uh, add that message to the spreadsheet now once you've added the message to the spreadsheet what do you want it to do i want it to send me an email with the information from said spreadsheet and I want you to I want the script to know that when you send me the email the subject should be contact form submission so this is where you have the constant so this is something that is not changing which would be my email submit it to me the subject will always contain um, contact form submission and then the constant right now the constant again the subject of the email or the body of the email should always contain the name from the data that was submitted in the sheet. And it should also contain the email and it should also contain the message. So when you're writing it with the constant on there, you're saying to it right now, I need you to email me this information from the spreadsheet <laughs> on form submittal. See what I'm saying? I hope that makes sense. It makes sense in my head. <laughs> I don't know if it makes sense out loud. So now I have to use another service provider. So another service, I should say, from Google, which is the mail app. So to send the email, it has to know how to send the email. So I'm gonna use the mail app in order to do this. So now it's time to add the HTML page. So what's going to be served to the web, 
the front end view of it and to do this I'm just gonna name it contact and I'm gonna hit the plus sign obviously as you saw and then um, add that HTML page. I am using the materialize um, CSS in order to style this so this is the framework that I'm using so that I don't have to do all this individual writing like this is what this square will look like and this is what that one will look like and it, it's just easier just to use um, framework to to do this so right now you see that I'm adding an ID and that's because the ID is going to come in handy later um, on this HTML page when we start talking about like the submitting the information and then um, just querying the information I should say so right now I am just going to add in the contact form information I am going to speed through this because it is quite long you know if I have to do it manually and so I just I decided <laughs> I would just you know add the information and then show you how it's how it's created after the fact so um, please excuse the flash I think it's the program that I'm using um, it does not like my graphics card and I don't like this program so I'm gonna switch programs here pretty soon because I do notice that it does this weird flashy thing so now I've added the um, HTML form and now I'm adding just an additional script inside of the form and to do this I need to add an event listener so an event function so right now I'm adding that constant which is the form itself and then I need to select the document which is why we also had to have a form um, an ID for this which is the contact form and then add that event listener and then once we have the event listener we need to prevent it from um, the default everything you do has a default everything you create has a default function and we want it to skip the default function and to do what we say to do next so that's why event dot prevent default is what we specified in this area here so now we're saying okay the form elements, the name, the email, the message, get the values, so what someone has submitted. And then for the message, I am sanitizing the message that comes through, um, which you'll see me right here in just a second. I need to, to specify why we do this. You wanna sanitize your message to prevent script injection um, sort of malware from coming into your site you don't want someone to just say submit code into your what do you what do you call it into your contact form um, especially if it's already inside of your site that's because they could potentially you know submit hazardous information so we want to prevent that by having um, the message be sanitized and remove specific things like anything that has like a tag or something like that now there are multiple ways to sanitize a message you don't have to just um, sanitize a message the way that I have written it there are different things you can do to prevent like spam um, and then just prevent people from submitting malicious information into your contact form or just general on your website so I say do things cautiously especially when it when it comes to um like a client site and even your own site you want to protect the information that you're receiving and protect data as best you can so now you see that i'm just running um the google script so the form submit information once someone does it and then i'm gonna add something after like at the end once it's done how do people know that the form has been submitted well i'm gonna add the um thank you for contacting us we'll be in touch sort of deal or thank you for contacting us we'll be in touch in 24 to 48 hours whatever the case may be um you just want to make sure that you you know <laughs> write it correctly
All right, so now it's time that I run the script by going in the top, you'll select run the do get function. And you wanna make sure when it comes up, it's gonna say this is unsafe, that you click the drop down so that you're able to approve it. The reason it's gonna come up as unsafe um, is because you're specifying that you want it to receive like to be able to edit and make changes to your data. And so for a lot, for, I wouldn't say a lot, but for, for Google, when you're doing something like that, it just seems sketchy to submit data information on your behalf, which is why it's like, eh, I don't know about that. So now here you see me testing the information. Um, when I was testing the information, I noticed that there was an error. So now here I am just retesting the information again to make sure that I don't get another error. All right, so after testing, I noticed it worked well and that was pretty much it. All right guys, I know this video was pretty sped up. Um, that's because it originally was quite long and I just didn't want it to be over an hour long to explain every little thing. So for that reason, I will leave a link to the script so that you can practice on your own. Ah, oh, yes, it's so nice to finally be done. These videos take a long time to do and create, but please let me know if you have any questions. And again, I thank you all so much for watching and don't forget to vote for your next video. And of course, as always, See ya.